Hi, this is Scott with Learn to Stop Hunger, and today we're going to take a look at how to use the progress bar in WPF for long running tasks. So I've got Visual Studio 2013 open right now, and I've already created a new WPF project using Visual C Sharp. The first thing that we want to do is put a progress bar and a, a progress bar, a text block, and a button on our main window and we're going to do that using XAML. I've already got some XAML predefined here for this so I'm going to go ahead and paste it in and I'll explain what I've got here. So actually you can see on the screen here here's my progress bar um, I've got a text block below that and I've got a button below that and they're all inside a grid um, I'm going to go ahead and switch things up here. I'm going to hide my uh, designer view so we can look at the XAML a little bit better. So what I did here was, uh, like I said, there's my progress bar. I actually set a width on it. Um, I set it to a height of 20. That seems to be a pretty good height for the progress bar. I've got a text block. I'm going to use that. That's right below the progress bar. I'm using that to show uh, text related to the progress and then finally the button to actually launch the work to be done and since I pasted this in I do actually need to come in here so I've, I've selected my button I'm gonna come over here to my event handlers for the button I'm gonna double click on this because my event handler was not yet created and now I've got it created so uh, when the buttons clicked I'm actually going to make use of a background worker. So if I go ahead and create a background worker here. So I've pasted some code I already have. Background worker by default you're not going to have the using statement for that. You're going to need it. I'm going to right click on background worker and do resolve and do using system component model. That's going to add my using statement up here at the top for the background worker. Alright, so on my first line here I'm creating a new background worker and then I need to set up my event handler for when the work is completed. I'm going to call that worker underscore run worker completed. I'm going to right click here, do generate method stub. That's going to create uh, a nearly empty method for me right here. Okay. Uh, the next thing I do is I set the property worker reports progress to true. I do want my worker to report progress back to that progress bar and the next thing I'm going to do is assign an event handler for do work, the do work event here. I'm going to go ahead and do generate method stub again. I've got a new method stub for actually and that's the wrong one. There's my method stub for actually doing the work and then finally I need an event handler for progress changed so I'm going to go ahead and generate that method stub. And you can see that's been added here. And once I've got all of my event handlers set up, I finally want to run my worker asynchronously, uh, which means it's not going to be blocking the UI thread and other things can go on in that main UI thread. So now we'll work on some of these event handlers, the progress change event handler. What we're going to do there is we're going to be setting the value of the progress bar and we're going to be setting the text of the text block. So I've got some existing code for that I'm going to paste in. And one thing that's probably worth noting here, well, a couple things we've got this progress change event args and it has a couple properties on it. One property is progress percentage um, and that's the, 
That is an int that I can use for my progress bar value. Another thing that it has is this object called user state. And in this case, I'm going to be setting that to a string, but you can actually use your own custom objects here as well. Um, and you would just have to cast it to that particular object. And then once you've done that, you could access any of the properties that you need. In this case, like I said, user state's going to be a string, so I'm setting my progress text block text to that string. So now I'm going to work on my completion code here, down here in worker, run worker completed. I'm going to do a couple of simple things here. One, I'm going to show a message box so that the user knows that my the background work has been completed. And then after that message box is closed, I'll set my progress bar value to zero, and I'll set my progress text block text to an empty string, so basically resetting uh, the progress UI there. Now finally, I'm going to implement the actual work to be done here. So I've got some more code for that that I'm going to copy in, and I will paste it in here, and we'll talk about it. All right, so my sender I can actually cast as a background worker, um, and it's this background worker object that I created up here. So I assign that to a variable here because I'm going to need to use that later to report progress. And I call, actually right away I'm going to do it, worker.reportprogress. And when I call report progress, that's going to end up calling this progress changed event handler, updating our progress bar and updating the text block. And I have to pass in two arguments to it. One is my int, which is the progress percentage. So in this case, I'm starting out with a zero percentage. And then I pass in my string which ends up being the user state that we talked about up here. Okay, so to start out, my user state string is going to be processing iteration 1. All right, and then I've got a loop that I'm going to go through 10 times, and I'm going to sleep on that background thread for one second each with each of these iterations. Um, sleep takes milliseconds as an argument, so you need a thousand to make one second. You can see here that I need to add a using statement for thread, so I'm going to right click, go to resolve, using system threading, and if we go up here to the top, you can see that the using statement was added. We got rid of our red squiggly line here, and then after each sleep of a second, I'm going to report further on the progress. I'm going to show, uh, I'm going to increase the percentage by 10 and I'm going to um, update the text block message to say which iteration I'm currently processing. Okay, And then after that at the very end I'm going to update my percentage to 100 and my text blocks text is going to be done processing. So that's all there is to that. I'm going to save all my changes here and we'll go ahead and run the project and see how it looks. All right, so obviously it's not a very pretty window, but this is just a simple window to demonstrate here. We've got our progress bar. You can't really see the text blocks here. You'll see it once I run it, and we've got our button. So I'll click the button, and there you see text block is being updated, and the progress bar is being updated. And it's going to go through all the iterations. Once it's done, you can see that it did update to 100%, and it says done processing. And then we got our message box up here. It says all done. I'm going to click OK. And then our progress indicators are cleared out there. Progress bar is reset. The text box is reset as well. So that's a very basic example of how to use the WPF progress bar uh, for a long running task using background worker. Hopefully, you'll have found that to be helpful. And good luck with your WPF endeavors.